Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to share four tips for teaching your students how to use a number line in math. Using a number line to teach different math skills is a pretty common tool that is used, but it's actually a really abstract thing for students to get their minds around. When you think about what a number line is showing and how the numbers are represented, it kind of takes away from each item being, you know, its own individual unit, and it's showing numbers, it's showing things in a length model where students are actually having to count the spaces between something, right? They're no longer counting like individual items or at least that's how it can be perceived. And there are some arguments that say that number lines should not even be introduced until second grade, because when we think about it in second grade, we do want students to use a number line to represent a few different things like fractions. Um, towards the end of second grade, they're using open number lines. So really it's a question of developmentally what is appropriate. But all that being said, in today's video, I have four tips that I think are really going to help your younger students use a number line effectively. I would love to know from you, do you have students use number lines in your classroom? If so, what grade do you teach? Let me know down in the comments. I find it interesting to hear uh, just different perspectives. Like I said, some K and one teachers are like, we do not use a number line. We stick to very concrete materials while a number line is more abstract. And then I know when I taught first grade, I almost always introduced a number line. Um, in fact, not almost, I, I always introduced a number line and how to use it. So I would just love to hear your thoughts. If you're ready to hear my four tips, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. All right, tip number one for helping students use a number line effectively is to start with concrete models. We all know that best practice in math involves using a lot of hands-on manipulatives. And when we do have our students add things, let's pretend we're adding four and three more, or they're just looking at four and three and they're comparing them however they want to do this. Um, we start with things like cubes, right? Unifix cubes are a great one. We often have them first in a pile so we'll have like four things separately and three things separately. Then sometimes we like to stack them because we can compare uh, the stacks. But when we're thinking about the number line model, we also want to go ahead and connect them to have students see this in this like horizontal fashion, in this length-based fashion. Here they can still see there's four, they can see there's three, they can see they're all individual units, but they can still compare that this is less than this, and that when you put them together, we get seven. So here we are kind of taking the number line format, but we are just showing students what that actually looks like with manipulatives. And just to be clear, I would do this before I've introduced that number line. So I'm just talking about different ways to represent our addition concepts or our number concepts. I wouldn't always just have students see these as four individual items. I'd have them stack them. I'd have them put them next to each other. I would have them put them exactly like this in a horizontal fashion and count it up, kind of looking like a bar model, right? And we can represent what this looks like. Four and three equals seven. You could draw it on the board in this way. But again, using these concrete manipulatives is a great first step. Tip number two when teaching students how to use a number line is don't jump right to a number line. Use a number path. Now, if you don't know what a number path looks like, here is a picture so you can see. It essentially looks just like a number line, but you can see that there are still individual boxes for each of the numbers that are represented there. Here, students are actually able to emphasize the singular units and objects, and it's a great visual model. Um, instead of going right to that kind of length-based normal number line that we're used to seeing. Now, if I'm asking students to go ahead and add numbers using a number path instead of a number line, they're not counting hops in between, right? They're not counting that distance. They still get to go ahead and count those singular units and it helps them visualize that a little bit better. If you need number paths for your classroom, I will go ahead and link some free ones that I found down in the description. But like I said, that is a great place to start before diving to an actual number line. 
All right, tip number three for using number lines effectively in your classroom is to practice number line familiarity. And what I mean by that is don't just dive in to, all right, everybody, now we're gonna practice addition or subtraction or whatever it is with a number line. Here's a brand new tool. Instead of just jumping right into the strategy that's going to be used with this tool, spend a lesson or two actually familiarizing your students with the tool and what it represents. Now there's many different ways you can do this. First, you'll wanna show students on the board, uh, whether you have a tactile one that students will be using or just an image of one, what a number line looks like so of course they are used to seeing it but then there's some things students can do to help understand what the number line represents so one activity I love to do is to create a sticky note or a post-it note number line and I will give students all different um, post-it note numbers and they have to come up whether it's on the wall or on the floor or on the board and they have to go ahead and create that number line um, you might have them do two different ones if you want to do two number lines to 10 or they can all work together and make a number line to 20 that is up to you but they will then recognize that you know each number is going next to one another they go in order they're equal distant apart this kind of makes like a big number path essentially for students to be able to see and if you do have a big number line displayed on the board you can even just have them take those numbers and come match it to the number line just as another way for them to visualize what they're seeing Another great strategy for students to understand the number line better is to use manipulatives with their number line. And what I mean by that isn't that they need to necessarily take out these cubes again and match it up to their number line because it might not match. But there's a few ways you can have students do this. Here's an example, and this is a shoddy example that I just threw together right now because I wanted to show you. Um, putting these together can be a bit finicky because you really need, look at this just popped off you really need to be able to secure the pipe cleaner to the number line. But again, I just printed this out real quick. If you can get a number line, make sure it is nice and laminated and sturdy. And then if you can either staple or uh, attach the pipe cleaner right above the number line, uh, you still want them to be able to see the tick marks and everything, but if you can attach it to it in a way that is secure, then this is a great strategy. All you do is add a little bead and here students will actually be able to practice moving the bead uh, over, right? It gives them another kind of hands-on tactile movement instead of just thinking they have to hop over. Um, hopping even with their finger is a little abstract. If they can actually move something across the number line and see that it's moving each space, it will help them really understand what's happening with these concepts. If you don't wanna go through the trouble of making those, you can just simply use your number line and a manipulative, uh, just one at a time, whether it's a cube or anything fun that you want, and have them practice, and you would do this with the pipe cleaner and bead too, but have them practice making moves. Put your manipulative on the number 12. Hop forward three. What number do you land on? One, two, three, 15. Again, giving them that tactile movement helps them understand that they are moving the spaces as they go forward on the number line. Now, of course, as you are having them practice going forward and having them understand that that is adding on, um, you also want to make sure that they understand this number line is linear and not only does it go forward, but you can go backward as well. So you'll really want to have them practice each. Two other quick little things you can do is you can throw up a number line on the board. You can have just a few missing numbers there and have students come up and fill in the missing numbers. That's just a simple way for them to recognize the numbers of course need to go in order and what numbers they should be used to seeing on their number line. And then also on the board, I like to display a number line that already has some hops on it so maybe it will start at the 10 and then it will hop to the 14 and the circle might be around a 14 and I would ask students what is represented here what's happening in that picture and I'd be looking for them to tell me that you know we started on the 10 and then we hopped to 14 so what does that mean we added four what this shows is 10 plus 4 equals 14 that's basically like a number talk you can do by showing those number line images and asking students students what's happening here. All those examples really emphasize that tip three is to get students familiar with this new tool and what it represents before just throwing them right into it. And tip number four for teaching students how to use number lines is to represent problems in different ways. And what I mean by that is once you introduce this number line, don't just have students solve things on a number line. 
ask them to explain other ways to solve it. So for example, we'll go back to three and four because you know, I have them right here and it's an easy place to start, especially in first grade. If you pose a problem on the board like three plus four equals blank, I want my students to be able to solve this and show me how to solve this a few different ways. So I would want them to show me on a piece of paper, they can show me like three circles plus four circles, uh, equals seven circles. They can write down an equation, three plus four equals seven. There should be a place where there's a number line. They can show me we start on three, count four more, equals seven. This type of activity really helps students connect the different ways that addition is being shown, and it helps take the abstractness out of this tool, right? They are starting to understand that, wait a second, these three and four manipulatives put together is seven. When I write the numbers three plus four, it equals seven. When I start at three on a number line and hop four more, it is seven. These are just different ways to represent that problem. So especially when you start introducing this tool to your students, you of course want them to use it to solve different problems that you're asking them, but you want them to use it in addition to other representational ways of showing things. Again, it'll just help them make those connections a little bit better. So there you have four of my top tips for teaching students how to use a number line. I would love to know if you have used any of these in the past or if you have other ideas that help your students really understand what's going on with a number line. Um, I know so many students, especially in first grade, when I would start to teach that strategy, the biggest thing for them is that first hop, right? If I'm saying three plus four, they start on the three and they know they need to jump four, but they say one and they don't they don't do the hop, right? Because they're really not taking into account that they have to move that space. So especially familiarizing your students, that tip number three, with the number line and using a manipulative to actually move it will help them understand that. But if you have any of your own tried and true tips, I would love to know them down in the comments. I read all the comments and I'm always interested to hear what other teachers are doing in their classrooms. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.